Welcome to our panel. You know, celibacy has always been perceived as a sacrifice. It's always been perceived as something that we give as priests as a way to offer ourselves and be more completely available to the one thing that we're committed to, and that's serving the church. Uh, and in some ways it's no different than uh, a married man or a married woman giving themselves totally to another person and, and limiting their, their sexual selves to that one person. Do you buy his argument about isolation? I mean, when, when he was giving his example, um, Cardinal O'Brien, this was, we talked about how isolating it was and use an example of, of a woman companion. I mean, he talked about female companionship that at some point people just get, get lonely. Um, you know, uh, do you think that he's got a point in the loneliness? For some, I think there is a, I, I certainly try to have a healthy kind of lifestyle that allows me to have healthy friendships and uh, companionship with other priests and with people. Uh, when I was in a parish, I don't work in one now, but when I worked in a parish, had very healthy, strong relationships with, with uh, families and parishioners. And I think there are many ways to keep that as a healthy lifestyle. There are many ways, and we've certainly seen through the sex abuse scandal, the ways in which that can reduce itself to something far less than healthy and, and to the point that it's criminal. He says it also makes the priesthood le less attractive, which has always been a struggle, right, to, to get more priests, to come, especially American priests, to come into the priesthood, uh, contributes to the shortage of priests, influences, um, you know, how men who pursue ordin ordination fare. I mean, and, and he does link it back to the sex scandal uh, in a way. He says it, it fac he uses the word factored into in, in some way into the sex scandal. Do you think that's true? Um, you know, the statistics that we see in the church uh, in the United States show that uh, the, the, the percentages aren't really pointing to that. I, we, we look at about 1% of the priests in the United States who were ever affected by that or who were ever uh, kind of gave over to those kinds of inclinations. And those statistics are no different than in larger population, in married people and teachers and, uh, and any other profession that's there. So we don't think that it's a question of celibacy being the contributor.